is Steve. Thanks for stopping by to check out Salt TV. This time I'm going to show you the first half of my top new vinyl releases I picked up in 2018. But first, what I'm drinking this time is a Flying Cauldron Butterscotch Beer non-alcoholic, of course. So, 100% natural and gluten-free for all those who prefer their gluten-free. It says here on the back, since 1374, the Flying Cauldron has been making this magical brew for underaged wizards or wizards who are young at heart at their brew pub in Hogsbreath, England. Since 1374, and some people think 20 years was a long time ago. The recipe has changed. The recipe has changed little over the centuries. It has the perfect combination of spells and quality natural ingredients. Add a scoop of vanilla ice cream to create our giggle potion. Yeah. <laughs> Let's check this out. This is a, uh, it says it's a uh, cream soda, which I'm not a big fan of, but I like it okay. My dad loved cream soda. I haven't mentioned that before. Uh, I might need to use a different type of a. Uh, There we go. One grease around the, Maybe this opens beer bottles better. Maybe I didn't get it under there well. If I can smell it, I can smell that butterscotch wafting out. Just that alone is enough. You know, I've got uh, some uh, wax burning in the next room and I can't smell it over this butterscotch. Speaking of, I go into record stores a lot of times, especially the dirty old, cool, dirty old record stores, and they got incense burning. Alright, I understand the whole hippie thing with the incense and everything, but isn't that the last thing you want to be putting in the air for records? I don't know. It's uh, it's carbonated, but not super strongly carbonated. It's kind of mild. Um, it almost isn't carbonated. It may not even be carbonated. Yeah, there's some carbonation in there, just enough to make it slightly bubbly, but mostly mild. Um, it's like butterscotch water, carbonated water. <laughs> But it's um, it's not thick, but it's strong, so um, a lot of taste anyway. Uh, very tasteful, more than like taste uh, flavored water would be or anything. Uh, I'd say check it out. Kind of cool. All right, first up is Clutch with the Book of ba Bad Decisions. Now, as good as the latest Striper is, the cool factor of this clutch, just inch out that album for this list. Besides, Striper got a vid all to themselves on Salt TV 28, so go check that out. As well, I presented this clutch album on Salt TV 29. Uh, so I suggest checking out that video for a full review of this. Still, it bears pointing out, again, the rather rad layout here with the slick New England Americana imagery. I don't know about this interior, that seems, that seems like a waste to me. I'd rather see a band photo or something. Uh, but uh, the uh, Coke bottle, definitely carbonated. Coke bottle clear uh, was pretty cool. Um, 
Yeah, I'm kind of beginning to think some of the clear doesn't sound as well, but I don't know. Somebody else, I'd like to see a, a, a list of, uh, what do you call it? I'd like to see a, a graph of how many people, uh, of course that's still anecdotal. People think that uh, clear doesn't sound as good. I was about to uh, buy a couple of clear Godflesh albums, and uh, I was like, man, I don't know. I know the black's gonna sound good. Uh, maybe it makes a difference for it to be 180 gram. I don't know. But uh, anyway, give me your comments about what you think about clear, coat by the clear, uh, how you think that sounds, if you think it adds noise, in essence. I really dig this eagle photo cover. <clears throat> Soft machine, hidden details. Now it was a good sign when the first few notes played were guitar, and yet right away Theo Travis took over on sax. Really, all four musicians are up front in the mix, um, give you equal play where the super humming bass becomes as prominent as John Etheridge's leads. Uh, drummers love their snares. Uh, here's no exception, yet John Marshall, rather than being a distraction, functions well to keep all the jamming in control. Though no original members appear on this album, uh, from what I understand, uh, they brought back the name Soft Machine because this is truly a legacy band as they've as most all of them have been around since the very earliest days um, now as an Alan Holdsworth fan it was interesting to hear Etheridge play his version of the familiar track the man who waves at trains from the 1975 bundles album since that's where Etheridge came in replacing Holdsworth now, out bloody rageous from the third album also brings in some familiarity, yet far from simply waxing nostalgic, this group is, as always, about exploring the dimensions of sound. And while enjoying experiencing hidden details during the moments uh, things seem to turn to chaos, it's progressive sounds uh, which tend towards jazz fusion that make this album something I can look forward to putting on a pair of headphones and getting lost in. Um, not being fortunate enough to make the trip to see these Englishmen in Chicago, I do feel fortunate I was able to acquire one of the 200 tour edition marbled minimalist, uh, marbled uh, blue and yellow albums. <laughs> Uh, while not a gatefold and without the insert, the minimalist style art layout is rather nice. Black lined um, inners and almost a textured, uncoated stock cover. Uh, sometimes the enjoyment increases as the hidden details begin to emerge. I'm just left to wonder with the ghost sax on heart of guard. Curious. Derry Daugherty, the color of dreams. I really don't think of Derry Daughter T. I always want to say Daughter T. Daughter Daughter T. Daughter T. Daughter T. I don't know. Daughter T. I don't know. I should know after all these years, but anyway. I really don't think of Derry Daughter T as a country artist, being the front guy for the choir and Radio Halo, but I guess there's also the Lost Dogs. But then having a recording studio in Nashville, I would assume really benefited the heartbroken themes on this album. 
Uh, not that it's twangy at all. Donnerty is a master of atmosphere, and I think what really perked my ears was the brilliant incorporation of southern strings and pedal steel to create a most sobering set of soft, sad psalms. Now, many people go through very difficult times in their lives, yet we rarely ever really know what they're feeling until, that is, we hear it from a musician. Um, I never truly knew what the writer of Psalm 6 uh, meant by dissolving my pillow in tears until I was faced with how divorce was going to affect my relationship with my kids. But then, as he sings here, people want what they want and the heart feels what it feels. It kind of gives you an idea of where this album is going. This isn't to say that this album is necessarily a depressing listen, uh, although I did have to put some thought into saying the song Saying Goodbye and see it from the perspective of how the loss of relationship can feel like deep and total abandonment. It's a rather beautiful album and there are some rather upbeat tracks that are cool a mix of say somewhere between U2 and the Eagles. Uh, though one of the best country style songs I've heard in quite some time is Your Chair, where Doherty memorializes the life of his veteran father. Now, a fun challenge for you car guys, in that song he mentions at 44 Ford, where might one have found such a creature? I've already given you a hint. Now, with the help of some of his lost dogs, Doherty has crafted a full, rich, smooth album to wrap you in soothing sounds of heartfelt comfort. Now, Lo Fi Adelity has been treating all their rela releases right. Uh, this LP is treated to a separate lyric, color lyric insert, and white line sleeve for this deep blue 180 gram vinyl. And the uh, the digital versions include a six uh, include six extra ambient tracks uh, that carry kind of along the same soothing sounds as the album. Uh, of course, they're instrumental. Uh, so check that out on Low Fidelity Records. I got it off Bandcamp. Yeah. Good. Holy Grove. Holy Grove 2. Uh, having played the Holy Grove debut frequently throughout the previous year, I was stoked to see another new release by this soulful heavy groove band. Now this is the kind of swagger I dig, more of the bluesy persuasion. Though they don't wear it out with an overly lengthy album, they do give the five tracks room to breathe a bit of the dark breath of doom. And it's not often you hear a vocalist belt out bellows of grief such as is heard here by Andrea Vidal. Every song is played as if it's the last dirge that may ever be heard. Uh, with an average length of seven minutes, the album makes good use of that time, carrying you through dark haunts of the forest, seas, and space. The doomy heaviness brings to mind trouble, yet this is as much Janis Joplin as it is Iomi Sabbath. Now, props once again to Adam Burke on another cool LP cover, which is matched with an appropriate magenta moss merge, 180 gram platter slid into a nice black line sleeve next to the lyrics insert which is barely legible <laughs> but a nice color match nevertheless good stuff here on ripple music maybe you can uh, scan that <laughs> good luck
White Wizard, Infernal Overdrive. Not to be confused with the Wizard of the Single Z. I was going to save this album for another video, but I've had to put that video on hold for now. Though it fits for the, this one for sure. Of course, what color variant is appropriate for such an album other than besides fire or rays, black, white letter on black? Well, Wizard White, of course. One out of 200 double LPs here. Now, if your rock metal station hasn't been playing this album, then that tells you why I don't listen to my local station. Now, obvious comparisons to Maiden and Priest aside, this band simply carries the metal banner as such a banner should always be raised among the mightiest. Now, playing in lockstep, these guys pummel with the force of a shock and awe. Well, that's the themes of the tracks of note here. Uh, an homage to warriors living and fallen. Now, as you see, it wouldn't be classic metal album without the mention of the beast. Yet, contrary to many offerings of late, uh, the opening and title track warns against the New World Order, constantly streaming into our minds through the media. Now, for Metalhead, this album entered my top albums of the year because all elements are here. The thundering rhythms, dual guitar attacks, and soaring power vocals topped with a nice dash of cheese. Now the Red GTO cover is filled out with a classic gatefold of lyrics which are enhanced with their own art. It's got the whole package. White Wizard, Infernal Overdrive. Hope to get that other video done. Um, <laughs> springs are on its way. Sometime this summer. Fire Down Below, Hymn of the Cosmic Man. Now, this album is the de definition of space rock. If you're gonna follow in steps of, say, Caius, you better be good. Uh, these guys manage to get it done with style. Where it gets interesting, though, is when they slow it down and give those low tones somewhere to go. With riffs mass massive enough to lift an astronaut into space, they manage to morph the heftiness into hooks mass uh, enough to ha lift them out of orbit. Uh, the story is told of the lost astronaut. Whether it's a guitar god fallen from amidst the stars and lost from view of those he was reaching out to, or the savior come to earth with the plan of salvation to include a dark abandonment before a return of light and eternal life. This album, however, was created to help propel you down a hot desert highway in your fine fin Cadillac from 62. Right on. Okay, space rock, desert rock. These guys from Belgium have crafted a masterful killer album on Ripple Music with this interstellar variant at a hundred pressed on Ripple Music yeah try scan that <laughs> fire down below hymn of the cosmic man Miracle, The Strife of Love in a Dream. Now, it was my junior high days at the height of hippies frying their brains and earth worshiping began. Hey, I sported the leather and denim myself. I grew up in Oklahoma. 
But I'll tell you, just a few years later, the first president I was able to vote for was Reagan. And it's been all about progress since then. So, synth pop, I associate with success. The digitization of music in the 80s was the future sound. Yet, dark wave took the pessimistic view, idealistically. A little different than the previous hippies, really. Out came the post-apocalyptic movies, and kids had a reason to fry their brains again. Uh, soundtracks go um, Steve Moore of Zombie and Daniel O'Sullivan of Sun O and Over have joined up again to create what to me is another spatial soundtrack to that prophetic apocalypse those post -hip post hippies are bent on self-fulfilling. The future of 80s is now and right here in full spectrum sound. 300 count on Blue Splatter. On Relapse Records, no less. If you can imagine. Weatherfall, a prelude to sorrow. Now, on top of being masterfully played power metal, what really sets this apart in the genre is super low end. There's a good reason why Sanctuary asked vocalist Joseph Michael to carry on the torch for fallen fellow bellower world in. It's no wonder given Michael's beyond equal vocal abilities in force and in range. It's above what I can get. <laughs> the similarities even appear in the emphasis of flatness in the vibrato, giving him the same dark, haunting tone. On this album, though, you hear a mix of Sanctuary's power and Nevermore's down-tuned heft. Witherfall distinguishes itself by investing more in symphonic-style dramatics to tell the musical story. And this opens up more space for more dynamics, which at times includes some Spanish acoustics. Um, in 2013, Iced Earth guitarist Jake Dwyer and Michael put the band together releasing Not Turns in Requiems in 2017. Uh, soon after, drummer Adam Sagan died and left the band to complete this A Prelude to Sorrow. Now, while the band are continuing on and releasing an acoustic LP called Vintage, it'll be interesting to see what happens with Sanctuary as well. I know I'm looking forward to it. Now, while Jake Dwyer and vocalist Michael, who happens to be the cousin to the mighty R.J. Dio, previously worked with the storied and aforementioned White Wizard. Their dedication to excellence really shows with this band. It took two years to produce it and have it, um, to complete it and have it perfectly produced. And the excellence continues in the packaging with an appealing cover by Christian Wallen on a fitting uncoated gatefold. Great layout. It's got black lined sleeves for the double LPs. An insert, dedication, thanks. I hate it when that happens. Came with the poster of that LP cover. And the uh, thick blue vinyl even has an etching on side B, which the last time I pulled this out, it's been a while since I took it out, and I thought it was cracked down the middle. I was like, oh man. Because my the temperatures in my house fluctuate quite quite a bit, and uh, never know how that's going to affect <laughs> records. Usually in the winter time, I bring my records in. I set them just inside the door, let them uh, 
warm with, uh, I keep them in the box and keep them flat <clears throat> until they kind of come to temperature in the room. I don't know if that really makes any difference, but I've seen them work before, so if you change the temperature too fast. Now, if they had just sent the model in the photo along with this small t-shirt I ended up with, I could actually do something with it. <laughs> Great album. This package is really heavy. You know, it's double 180 gram anyway, but uh, thick card paper. They went all out with that. Exocrine Molten Giant. Now, possibly the best cover art I purchased in 2018. Maybe next to the next one. Just goes to show what great cover art does to help sell. And get it in my top 10 albums list. That logo though, uh, unfortunate, points off there. The coloring's nice around it, but I don't know. should have asked me. But sometimes what's written under the cover matches the story. And what we've got here is some huge, devastating tech death metal. Uh, that appealing mix of heaviness and technical proficiency that has grown extreme metal from the originators in, say, Sweden and especially Florida. Now, I kept hoping Unique Leader would offer the vinyl on Bandcamp. So I waited too long and had to import this red splatter from England at the end of the year. So apparently being created at Pirate's Press, it's made two trips across the pond. <laughs> now, however well produced, and laced with a few ambient intros. What it does lack in interesting melody, it gains in proficiency and power. Now, lyrically, it's what you'd expect from a youth growing up amidst never-ending war and constant warnings of global climate propaganda. Yet, hey, that's what metal is all about, right? Righteous indignation, however often misplaced, Camus, Desolation. Uh, Camus got right to work following up 2016's Crusher Hunted with Desolation. Yet another heavy metal masterpiece. Uh, while keeping the pace just a little less slow this time, it's just as heavy and dark with those mighty harmonized vocals. I'm not aware of a mightier guitar vocal duo out there right now than with Phil Pendergrass and Ben Hutcherson. Except that bassist Dan Byers and skinsman Zach Coleman equally bring the heavy for a mix that's just as galloping metal as Darkest Doom. Now, following along with the lyrics here, it's like hearing the sorrows of the gods who mourn after trading the righteous abode above for the harsh insatiable desires of the flesh on earth leading to eternal desolation well, it's songs of sorrow that often remind us that we're alive and alive to as they end the album with find the strength to carry on and find the way to the light and life of spring Now, uh, Sam Turner is highlighted well with his excellent artwork throughout. Front to back, even the black on the inside, which I really like. It's matched with a bronze foil stamp and bronze infused splatter black and bone vinyl housed in the black lined inner sleeves. Nice job. Great album. It's on 20 bucks spin. 20 bucks spin. 
Gamma's Desolation. All right, that's the first 10 of my top 20 albums for 2018. Now, what are your favorite albums of the year? Uh, leave me a comment, uh, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, check out the Facebook page. Well, thanks for stopping by. Now go out there and use what God blessed you with to do something cool, uh, cool for others, to bless others. This is Steve Saltzine, right on, right on.